This is how not to ship a piece of test equipment, especially an analog oscilloscope or anything really heavy. This is how it came in the mail. I thought the box was too small. I'll be shocked if this thing survived, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and pull it out. <laughs> yeah, this is the pattern. That's it. And I get that it was broken, that's why I brought it, but I'm shocked if nothing's bent or broken. They did the UPS real I mean post office I should say, not UPS. Really did a good job in here. Let me go and get this out of the box. <laughs> So I went ahead and took the oscilloscope completely out of the box. And that was your padding right there. That's it. And I'm shocked it somehow survived. At least from looking at the outside. I don't know if it has any internal damage or the CRT tube itself um, is bad. But doesn't look like anything's broken or cracked or anything. So that's a good sign. So post office. Didn't kick this one around, so that's a good thing, I guess. But you never pack these with just that in a small box that's barely the size of the scope and stuff like that because nine times out of ten, it's not going to end well. Thankfully, in this one, this was um one um the one out of the nine, or one out of the ten, I should say, that actually looks like it might have survived, so... I'm probably doing an upcoming video on this because it was so broken as is. Don't know what the issue is because I didn't state what the issue was with it. So this will probably be an upcoming repair video on this one. In this video, I'm going to be testing what's supposed to be a broken Tektronix 2235 dual channel 100 megahertz analog oscilloscope. I purchased this off eBay, broken as is, and from messaging the son, what he said in the listing was that all you could get was the green light on there, but nothing would come on the screen that was sold as is broken. And when I did message him, he did say he attempted to plug in his function generator into it, and he couldn't get no signal on any of the channels. So we're going to go ahead and see kind of what's wrong with it. This is not going to be a repair video, because... Obviously, we got to see what's wrong with it first, and then the next upcoming video, once we find the problem, we'll go ahead and attempt to repair it, of course. Now, I did take a look in the inside. I removed the cover and stuff like that just to see if any parts are rattling around or anything like that, just because the way it was kind of shipped poorly. I also went ahead and did uh, resistance checks on all the voltage rails on the power supply, which is easy to access. Just to make sure nothing was short and looked at the fuse and it wasn't open or anything like that. So this should be safe enough to power up. But just in case I do got it plugged into my dim bulb right there. And also into the variac. So we'll go ahead and turn on the variac first. Okay and I do got to switch to the bulb in series pretty much. And let's go ahead and turn it on. Now I don't expect this to fire on with the bulb in series and stuff because the switch mode... We'll have a lot of inrush and it's not going to start up. But we shouldn't see that bulb get really bright continuously. And the only thing we should see is it flash as the power supply attempts to start up. So I went ahead and pushed the power button. And yep, as to be expected, there's the switch mode trying to power up. But the switch mode power supply can't. So we'll go and turn it off. And we'll just go ahead and switch this now to line voltage, full voltage at least. And then we'll go ahead and power it on and see if it fires up. Okay, and that's good. There's no pop or smoke or anything like that. So that's a good sign. So let's see first. Beam fine. Oh, yeah, we get beam right there. Okay, so that's good, actually. Let's go ahead and switch this to channel 1, of course. We'll go ahead and feed the signal into it and see exactly what it's doing. Let's, of course, try to get the knob sort of correct. Position, we'll just, yeah, kind of estimate this so the signal is not all the way off the screen as we put a signal into it. And then we're going to go ahead and feed a 1 kilohertz, 1 volt peak to peak. I do got a 50 ohm terminated, so we should see 1 volt peak to peak, of course. Okay, and that's the other thing too. Let's set the sensitivity. Alright, and then let's just turn on the signal generator, of course. 
Let's see if we get anything in. Yeah, I got channel one, channel one right there. Okay, I got point two. Make sure nothing's there. Oh, that's not good. We're not getting nothing, huh? So yeah, it's probably not working as to be expected, of course. Nothing on the trigger. Oh, you would hope if I had the power on. Okay, yeah, see, now the serial light's on there, but... Ooh, that's not looking good. All right, let's go ahead and change it fast. Ooh, there you go. Let's set the sharpness right there. All right, sensitivity. Oh, yeah, the CRT is healthy. That's always a good sign there. You can see that the rotation's kind of off, and, of course, the position... Yeah, she is working. Huh. Supposed to be broken. Okay. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and just switch to channel 2. Let's go ahead and set the trigger channel 2 and see what channel 2 does. Oh. Yeah, we won't get anything. Wrong. Okay. Set the sensitivity there. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. And, yeah, of course, the position's there, but his scope is working. Both channels work. Okay. So let's go back to both here because I want to set the rotation. This shouldn't be rotated like that. And then I got the tool for this. Let's see if we can straighten that out. Oh, yeah, much better. All right. And, of course, we can set the sensitivity better. And, yeah, she's actually reading, too. One volt peak to peak. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, you can see that's pretty much bang on. And it's reading one kilohertz, too, considering the time base that it's on and stuff like that. So, this scope is functional. Let's see what a square wave looks like then. Oh yeah, compensation's actually pretty accurate too. So yeah, this scope works. At least as far as I can tell. It's supposed to be broken. Supposed to be no signal, nothing like that. But yeah, I got lucky on this one. And then it's also a better model too on top of it. Alright, let's go ahead and go to channel 1 and see the same thing. You go to set the trigger, obviously, channel 1. And that's... Well, we know it works, so... Okay, we got channel 1. We got channel 1 there. Oh, yeah, it wasn't pushed all the way. See, that's why. Yep. She is working. Let's go square wave. Let's actually put... Let's just go higher frequency now. Now we know this works. So I'll go frequency, and we'll do 1 megahertz. And let's see what 1 megahertz look like. And let's, of course, go to faster time base there. Man, I'm happy. This scope works, and we can adjust the sensitivity, of course. And, yeah, let's see what a square wave looks like at 1 megahertz. And, yeah, that looks very good, actually. So, you know something? Let's try to go 20 megahertz. Why not? Actually, let's go 10 megahertz. I won't we'll push it that hard yet. Okay. Right there. So, yeah, that's all working correctly. And, of course, you can set the, sensitive, the intensity. And then let's see what a square wave looks like. Okay, so this scope works, there's nothing wrong with it, at least as far as I can tell. We can go back down to 1 megahertz, of course. So frequency. Okay, and we'll slow, go to slower time base. Yeah, there's 
so good for it being broken. It focuses pretty sharp. I mean, position, trigger works. <laughs> well, I did want to do a repair video of this Tektronix 2235, but it works. So, I mean, I guess the upcoming videos of this will probably be to do, of course, inspection of the power supply and everything else and check the components and stuff and clean the switches because I'm going to take this all apart and get this all clean because I'm actually going to use this scope. And I'm glad it worked, so it turned out better than what I expected, especially after seeing the way it was shipped. You know what I mean? And it's fully operational, at least as far as I could tell. But that's always a good thing. So I guess this concludes the video for the Tektronix 2235. So I figure I'll go ahead and give you an inside look of this Tektronix 2235 analog oscilloscope. I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of you guys came to watch this video for. And here's the CRT itself. You can see the shielding over it. There's your delay right there. That's what that loop coax is for. Here's your vertical, the horizontals right down there and stuff like, of course, your itinerator and all that. And then here, of course, is the power supply, which is inside its own casing, so... I am going to tear this down completely because I do want to clean this up since I do plan on keeping this scope. And I'm definitely probably going to keep this one because I can tell that CRT does not have a lot of hours. Because normally when I see them, this is all cake full of dust. It's high voltage attracts dust and stuff like that. And usually when they have a lot of hours, this will all be black around here and all have black dust there. And no, I didn't clean it. That's how it is. So it doesn't look like it has very much hours and... I can also tell too by the intensity because I had it set really low and it was really bright. So that's a good thing. It tells me that the CRT is in good shape and has a lot of hours left in it. But I do have to service this still anyway because I want to go ahead and check the ESR and all those capacitors inside that power supply. Also check to see if there's any reefer caps or anything like that. Also go ahead and service all the contacts and stuff like that and remove this front panel clean it really good and stuff like that and then check everything else while I'm at it well, here you go this is an inside look and let's just go ahead and take a look underneath there's gonna be a cover over here and then you can see kind of what's under there. there's not much to look at underneath it but yeah that's an inside look of it and I gotta say this is much simpler than the 2400 series that I'm used to working on because they're loaded with boards and custom hybrids and everything else. This one's going to be a lot more easier to service than what I'm used to servicing. So that's a good thing, at least for me. <laughs> and the other thing I like about it too is there's no fan inside it. So this is going to be quiet and also I'm going to worry about it overheating any hybrids or anything like that too. So this is going to be a very good scope to have on the bench. And the reason why I got it for because I do work on a lot of tube gear and stuff like that like tube amplifiers tube radios and stuff like that and i also work on cassette decks reel to reels and stuff like that and i wanted to have an analog oscilloscope that was not too big to have on the bench and stuff like that and i really don't need the fancy readout or anything like that too because i kind of grew up using these and stuff like that and you know i can pretty much read you know the voltage and of course what time base and determine the frequency just by looking at the screen very quickly so really don't need that I just want to look at the signal see you know how the signal is like if you're getting any horizontal shake or anything like that when you're calibrating cassette deck and so forth and so and that's what this thing's pretty much going to be used for and also for tube equipment and stuff like that too these tend to work better than you know the modern DSOs and stuff like that so There'll be upcoming videos of it as I get the power supply out, go check the ESR on the capacitor and then start placing order for parts and stuff like that and tear this down and give it a complete cleaning and stuff too of course because it's quite filthy actually. The case is even a little bit worse because there's sticky stuff on it but I'll go and give this thing clean up, go ahead and test all the components, make sure they're good and there'll probably be upcoming videos of this oscilloscope. I also do got a 465 coming and that for sure I know is broken so there'll be upcoming videos of that and probably troubleshooting stuff like that too as well 
depending, of course, what the issue is with that scope once I get it. But there you go, pretty much.